I start with the word uh, decarbonize because I really think that if we look with a decolonized gaze to the black communities in Portugal, we have a lot to learn. They live lives that are very close to a decarbonized life. They don't travel a lot. They don't eat food that comes from the other parts of the world. They travel in public transports. They go to work, they don't travel, but they go to work in public transports. The bigger society doesn't learn from this because they are not looking at this they, with this uh, that I call a decolonized de gaze. People believe they don't have nothing to learn from these communities. It doesn't mean that they don't explore the culture, the music, even the fashion ways, always with a profit mentality, not with a learning, humble attitude. And also, uh, for me, it's uh, very important before the relations with governments and with uh, politics to practice uh, citizenship to practice democracy in the way we deal, in the way we relate with public institutions. In the case of Portugal, we are moving very fast to an idea that individuals can solve their problems and forget the rest, forget the others, that we live better alone if we don't work together because the community is, is heavy on me, is on, cannot be on my shoulders. So we leave public health, we leave public schools, we leave uh, public services always when we can. This is very dangerous because if only poor people stay in public school, the public school will be worse. But I see that many people, even left-wing, let's, let's put it like this, left-wing people, when they can, they put their children in the private schools. And then they say, ah, but in Finland is so good the school, we should have a school, a public school like Finland. But in fin Finland there are no private schools. <laughs> That's exactly why they are so good, <laughs> or, or at least better than ours. <laughs> Decolonize must question first the way we look at things, the way we see things and the way we deal with power that is still working in a colonial way. The coloniality of power remains in our relations inside Europe and uh, with Europe and Africa and South America and Asia and so on. Europe is still refusing to accept uh, its relation of exploitation in the past and in the present with the other places on earth. Racism, exploitation, bad behavior, it's also of the others, of the American, now of the Russians, never of uh, Europeans. But who is selling the guns? Even Portugal, who is not an industrial potency, is selling guns. We, we must think about these relations. Actually, I'm working now with the concept of de-othering <laughs> and de-bordering. What is othering? It's to turn the one who is perceived as the other into one thing. This makes people who belong to this homogeneous other to be perceived always as the representant of the group. They are not uh, never seen, recognized, integrated as individuals because as individuals they don't exist. They exist always as a representant of this other who is often dangerous, invasor. This is the problem of having others. It's not that in society we, uh, we cannot live with others. We know that since Hegel. I exist because you exist. If you don't exist, I cannot build myself. The problem with the othering is that suppressing people of their humanity, of their uh, individual uh, characteristics, of their personalities. If black person commits a crime, it's not that person 
who is committing that crime. It's they, it's the black people who commit crimes. In Portugal we have also that problem with the Roma people who are even more perhaps than black people attached with a couple of stereotypes that they cannot uh, run away from. The importance of this kind of uh, festival links with the importance of sharing uh, knowledge and experience. We are building here something that is uh, transnational because we have already changed connections and uh, maybe things can grow in a way that it, it's not uh, institutional, it's uh, more organic. It can only happen if people spend time together.